elimination matchup. There's still a chance God can't get through even with even if they lose. Uh, but the head-to-head -head matchups is what could spell disaster here for Fnatic. So I hope somebody told them because this one is real important. We've already seen some favorites fall short here at DreamHack Masters. Mouse Sports eliminated from Group B. Let's see if Fnatic shall join them. They are on the defense here as we begin the journey on Nuke. Ooh, already over towards the hut is where we get the action started. Crims, two kills, both headshots, one of which while blind. Crims on for the 4K, almost gets it there. It's Flush and Brolin to lend a helping hand to close this, but Fnatic takes CT sided pistol. Fnatic before this matchup was a big question mark, but after watching that Spirit match, you can kind of sympathize with losing to Spirit. Now, they clearly are an incredible roster and have made some big moves and probably caught Fnatic way off guard. Fnatic in general in this uh, road to Rio have been a bit sketchy since Pro League. They had a fantastic Pro League season, of course, but in the road to Rio, we're losing basically most of their games. So now we come over here, they're coming off of a win-loss type situation and uh, Godsent do look better than people expected as well. It's a it's a weird recipe in a lot of these groups for, for big upsets. It feels like all the groups have been turned almost on their heads and the favorites are not the people coming out ahead. So here's a pretty good start as well for Godsent, though JW open lines of sight on two players who are trying to wrap to heaven. Trade comes out, three up for Fnatic, but slight health advantage, not major. Ooh, come on, Farlig. He's on for the ace. He's got three kills already with this scout, the newest addition to Godsent. Looking good in his photo here. He's got that survivalist back, Ooh, oh, backpack strap. Yeah, he did. Pistols out. Oh, so close. That would have been a hell of a clip, a hell of an ace to start off this first map, but he comes a little shy. I'm still a little bamboozled as to how JW manages to get out from secret stairs and pepper those two players with their backs turned because Godsent had another two players just next to the red box, one of which was Farlick, probably scoped in and doing a good job at a distance versus the other members of Fnatic. But that was a big one because it got so much information and then they were still able to just drag it across the line. Yeah, versus, you and me both. Uh, a couple pistols this time, that's all they have. Indeed, indeed. Now Sticko, looking for a chance. He spots a peak, but uh, don't tell him a whole lot. Flusha, <laughs> he's already in their spawn, trying to buy their guns, taking out Crystal with a clean headshot, just pushing with the USP, getting a lot of information, and he's not a very high value target. Marley trying to look downwards here from the top of Silo, looking for somebody else to be cheating around outdoors. Don't forget the bomb. Bring it on. Falls down the ladder. Looks like they could just try and sprint into this A site, maybe find a little bit of timing here. It's not going to help, but they're losing bodies elsewhere. JW, crispy scout headshot. Crims getting confirmation that there are T's towards secret. He decides to throw himself into the vent with the knife out. Come get some. Oh, just stabbed in the back and he's ready for another. 3-0 Fnatic. Yeah, it's just Counter-Strike things. If you're on the ladder and you get stabbed in the feet, you die, no matter how much HP you have. So. That's probably the best way to stop this. This way you know nobody's gone down lower and you also get 1500 bucks per kill. So win, win, win there for Crims in that position. Now, Cod Scent will buy up in full. They don't have the op out. I don't know if that's going to be a priority for their T side. You imagine it's going to make an appearance once or twice. Farley crossing fast. Oh no, sorry, I was mistaken. He did, he did it for it. I was wondering where that, where that was. So they, they do have this. They've crossed outside a little bit early. They aren't throwing the rest of the smokes yet. They want to leave open lines of sight so people maybe make bad decisions. And there is a scout from JW that could potentially get picked off. Curious to see how long Flusha decides to wait on stairs. Decides to peek upwards, catching Farleg. So the offer's down. Seiko does get the trade frag. A bit labored. But they've got it in the bag. Four versus three. Maiden already starting to take to the top side of the roofs. Trying to figure out how the hell he gets Crims out from beneath him. And he has to be cautious because there are two players here towards heaven and hell. But Crystal finding the middle ground. Denying Brolin inside of Mini before we have the CTs bounce back across the kill feed. Two versus four to the two versus two. And they're still being faced with duels outdoors. Crim's going to pick up another couple headshots. A three-piece for him and a fourth round for Fnatic. One of the cleanest 2v4s that you'll ever see, really. I mean, there was just not much resistance here by Godsend. And clearly what they needed to do was once they got that last kill, they should have probably tried to group in some form or use some of their remaining utility. It felt like they played loose outside to a point that was great. And then they got diminishing returns by staying out there. Of course, Fnatic were clearly in great positions to trade, which made it a lot harder to win the rounds ultimately. But uh, yeah, because they're up 4-0 now, Godsend back on the save. And it's just a conversation about eco rounds. And I'd like to just put a spotlight on uh, Sticko, of all people, on, on Godsend. I think he's in a, in, in nearing his career best form on this roster right now. He's been a big part of their success recently and some of their upsets. And it's good to see him playing so well. 
Yeah, a player who had quite the tenured experience on Hellraisers with Angel. You know, a man who knows. Ooh, textbook TS, just like Golden. Grabbing a couple headshots here on ramp. I love that he doesn't just shy away from these pistol players. They know they have an advantage over this buy. So they hold the line and get five. Still zero for Godsent, but, well, we're already a third of the way through this T side. I think the defaults towards outside can be great if they tighten up a little bit, but we see teams that are trying to keep it more simple work towards these upstairs hits as well as ramp hits. You know, those are late, low utility rounds that come down to great entry fragging. And we saw Stakeo put an emphasis on focus and also a de-emphasis on strats. So outside can be one of the most convoluted ways to win a round uh, when it comes down to team cohesion. So maybe Godsend try something new if they, they want to keep it simple. Ooh, Krim just made a step. Crystal should have heard this. You saw him adjust slightly, but he was still up on that pedestal. Really easy for Crims to just kick out from beneath. He is off to a flying start here on Nuke. Maiden able to answer back through the smoke. He finds Flusha. Four versus three, but two of these CTs also tagged up pretty damn low. Yeah, the pace is kind of low here for Godsense. They're working out to try to get these trades, but Fnatic, are, they seem happy with how, how slow Godsense are playing. They're one step ahead of the situation, and there is some map control attained by Sticko, but it's a tough position where you don't know if this is a total bait. It could be a honeypot and they want you to come up ladder, and so he won't aggress to that point. Farleg waiting for the upstairs split, and Sticko finding a safer route into heaven, and finds a great angle on Brolin, as well as a second target. Wow. Not a chance in hell for that man. Golden down in secret, and upstairs has been completely compromised. Yeah, Madden, that last kill is definitely just the nail in the coffin, but hot hell, Sticko. Coming out of nowhere, clapping him back. He's still got all of his utility, two headshots, makes it look easy. Welcome to the game, my friend. If you're a the fan. Individuals for, uh, go on. We want to have the tractor emojis in the chat for Sticko. That's true. His classic. Trademark. Loves tractors because he puts in work. It's true, yeah. Or maybe he's that weird kid that's also like obsessed with trains. Maybe, you know? yeah. Uh, Sticko, Tycho, something there. Ve vehicles, kids, toys. There's probably some connection. Yeah, uh, a connection someone smarter than us could make. That's true. Maybe we ask him about that. It's been in his Twitter name for so long. What's the deal with trucks what, or tractors specifically, Sticko? What is the obsession? Where does it come from? Wow, dude, just a great shot, man. And it's such an important shot too because you know Golden's not gonna give him another chance. Would you say that uh, Sticko just hit the golden opportunity? I laugh inside. I laugh inside when you say that. It's a, it's a mouth closed, but you can see my teeth laugh. Okay. A little bit of air comes out of my nose. Slightly. Slightly. Don't want to overdo it. No. That's what Madden's thinking. Don't want to overdo this. He finds timing to play outside of Squeaky. Could have been him walking into the lion's den, but rolling on top of the hut doesn't catch him. So it turns out to be perfect. Flusha outside will cut down one, keeping these numbers even. Giving Crystal a chance to fall back with Bomb. Madden's going to spam a bit more here. Doesn't connect a kill this time around. Four versus four at the minute mark. They've been pressing these defaults really strong and actually come quite close to success and then shown us how they can make that bit of success in the early round, turn that into a round win. Great flick to the left there by JW. Scaring them in the lobby, pushing them out into the ramp and Golden doing his job. What a nice couple of kills by him. Also enough damage to complement that grenade. One HP for Crystal, he's out of the round. That is a fantastic hold by Golden. It's not as often these days that you see the ramp player stick around. But Golden, he wants the fight. He wants to go all five rounds. Nice, catching Farley over the box. That one was just, just mwah, beautiful stuff. Good multi-kill oh, to lock down the ramp, get right back into the control of things. Still, of course, God sent with enough economy to come into the buy, but it's almost everything on the line. Madden's gonna hold on to $2.6,000. Wall of Smokes sent soaring outdoors. Crystal's gonna put a Molotov over it. Actually gets extinguished. That one should have been meant for the secret stairs, just to confirm that no one from Fnatic could actually come peeking upwards. Now, JW hasn't come peeking towards secret, but he's certainly downstairs on one of the closer angles as well. So a nice jump over his line of sight sends him spiraling back towards Decon, and these T's give chase. They are right behind him. He's gonna go ahead and close the door, tries to use it as a shotgun, but the op fails him, and a five versus two ensues. Finally, an answer back from Crims, but a single kill is all that's his, and Brolin nowhere to be found. What happens, guys? Roland asks in the uh, Discord server. How did it all go wrong? He has no idea, no information for him. His job was to stay upstairs and make sure everything's all good in this part of the house. But down in the basement, that's when things got dirty. God sent. They pushed JW to the point that, I mean, he was on his last angle, I guess, behind the site, playing it like JW would, waiting for the door to open. You can see it cross his mind to maybe open the door in their face and take a shot. Don't really know where he goes from there. They all rush him down, even if he does get one kill. But uh, I, 
overall his movement to get to that point was was great you know dropping the smoke without pumping forward at all running down the stairs without jumping just exposing himself to a minimal extent and it was just smart from godson i guess to go after him knowing that he loves to fight and godson secure a second round and uh fanatic probably be slightly arsed about that one that's not a fun fun round to lose by any stretch of the imagination fanatic buy up once again jw back on the op with no money left over and this could be a round where god sent draw an eco out of fanatic yeah off of the back of facing one themselves so you put fanatic in that awkward position where they once were god sent again gonna throw up the wall of smokes trying to cross over there are a couple of cts ready to spam through this grenade timing could be great Farlig down for the count. Crimson Flush are going to combine for that one. Still, Godsent will move downstairs with almost all that remains. They leave just one player at the base of Silo. That's going to be Sneeko. Golden's Molotov interrupts them, though. This one's going to cut off Zen from the rest of the pack. Two Ts move past, one of which now inside of Vents. And this gives room for Madden to come here. He's going to have a good angle. Golden thinks he's playing headshot versus the staircase, but that's why the vent beat can offset you. JW missing his first shot, trying to get out into the control room, but that's where Zen's gonna take him down. So the outer play from Godsent seems to have worked yet once more. This time it wasn't a straight up push like last round, but they slowly and surely wiggled their way in. Godsend still seem well prepared in some in some ways, understanding Golden and how he's gonna play his spot, using the vent to approach him as opposed to, as you pointed out, using the stairs as a headshot angle, which is more of a 50-50. They put him in an unfair position, and that worked out well. They even had Sticko upstairs to catch flanks inside of Squeaky, and he's done a great job denying any exits for Fnatic. A very clean round overall from Godsend, and just as we brought up, a situation for Godsend uh, are now in a, a, a stark economic lead. It's going to be a save for Fnatic. Probably just pistols, not even half armor on this round, maybe. Oh, unless they want to try to force JW buys armor and a kit. Maybe they want to have a second to talk about this. Bit too late. <laughs> buys it up immediately. I'm a star now. Sticko saw a jump of 0.14 in his average rating between 2018 and 2019. 2019 was his best year, which is awesome. This is Sticko of Mouse Sports, of Hellraisers and was always the pretty much the worst statistical player on the team almost almost uh, the entire time you know and now it's not often that you see a player that goes from that position as one of the more hard supports in the scene to a player who is jumping up in his fragging performance alone and it oftentimes carrying the team it's great to see it's always it gives a... us all hope you know what i mean yeah yeah it's a great storyline when somebody can just come back and reinvent their game see teams or players move laterally sometimes uh fragger to igl uh opera to rifle or something like that where they have to change but they can still have the same impact if they're good enough but not just like statistically worse to statistically better uh from support to star that's just not normally a transition players can make this draw Trade. control <laughs> yeah whoa but nicer deeg the golden one from downtown gets the four versus three headshot back from stiko as he starts to crawl out from the squeaky door now. Everybody for Fnatic getting a little antsy. Golden's pushed ramp, and that's actually going to offset Farlig. Had Golden been back towards ramp, then his position predicted, but I mean, Golden's been everywhere, peeking the backside of Hell towards CT spawn, holding back Garage, and then extending into the ramp. Like, how many people from Hell rotate back into ramp, having left it open for a moment, and then go get some more map control on the other side? That's huge, but it is clawed back by Madden. And this round not done just yet. JW, he's going to hear him depart. Tries to give chase. Makes a little bit sound of his own. And there, there's a better weapon on the ground right there if he wants to go back for it. But nope, he's going to go running downwards. All the while, Stiko, don't, don't fall for this movement down on the B side because Stiko has that bomb. And he's inside of Mini towards A. Oh my the god, they actually pulled with, the rotate down. Yeah, just get get suction cup. Pulled down into the B bomb site like a couple of fools. God sent. Very slick moves. Holy smokes, they don't even, they have it. JW has a kit, so they're certainly going to test this. They have lots of time left on the bomb. But will their positions be unknown? A flash attempt, shut down immediately. Stiko just beneath it. And it's not going to be any easier for Crims as he attempts it with a Deeg. Does actually have the 1v1 on the bomb site. This could be huge, because had he grabbed that kill, there was a chance a kit beneath him and the second T was nowhere to be found. Stiko, he had to win that fight. Yeah, he could have basically stuck the bomb after getting that one kill, so... A crazy round full of these long range and just well placed eagle headshots. Good crosshair placement there by Golden, of course. And Fnatic steal one away. God sends default. It works for them. It works against them at times. I think uh, it's, it seems like an overall a good thing that they're doing that's helped them get back into this game. But uh, it might not be dynamic enough uh, for it to catch Fnatic off guard on all rounds. And I think, uh, yeah, Fnatic feel look like they're happy to take all these 50 50s. And that's just uh, allowing the score line to stay close. Stick out. Nice entry. And it's pistols. 
up again for Fnatic. That was such extreme. It was such a great 2v2. I mean, having someone rotate down the ramp, I wonder if he was running the whole way specifically to pull that bait, then coming up as Thicko wrapped into A site. It was just beautiful. Uh, probably working off the audibles. I don't think it's too much to say they were, they did that on purpose, but it's not something I don't think I've ever seen. They're about to walk into a crossfire and Crystal's low HP. Farley, great. A little snap back to the left. Picks up both those kills. JW was hoping that they just continued downwards towards him. Could actually prime a, an attempt for Flusha to slip in between it all. He hears the sprinting footsteps of the three T's. Whoa, nearly cutting off Farley with the op. Was not ready to be shot in the back like that. JW creeping up the vents, sees Farlig, takes him down, and that's just way much, way too much to ask for. So understandably, Godsent gonna pick up the win. Godsent gonna find themselves within one round now of Fnatic, who had a stellar start at the start of this half. As we brought up, must win game for Fnatic. It couldn't be more important these circumstances, and they're coming off of a, a really tough loss where they look like they stood no chance. So there's a lot of proving to do here for Fnatic, for Fnatic fans, and uh, and to, to Godsent as well, to show them that they're not supposed to be a threat of this caliber. JW. Openly aggressive pick here through the squeaky. Meant not to take damage, and uh, Madden overestimates what the Molotov can do for him. Puts him in line of sight of JW, even though JW is not in any danger whatsoever. And that is one point to Fnatic here. Uh, slightly up in material as they, in Godsent, look for another avenue to explode in. But Golden, again, he does not fall back. Well, this time, and he literally falls off, but I think he was willing to take that peek. Yeah, Golden really plays the line. And uh, I think the reason that, you know, he, he kind of, he, uh, he wrongs you mid-sentence is because hmm. he will make it seem like he's on the retreat only to come right back. Does that frequently, does it well. Crystal, holding back behind Mini, finds a player outdoors. Now Brolin's gonna start walking back towards the heaven and he has gifted the bomb. Nobody else actually coming out from Het Hut for Godsend. Instead, trying to use Squeaky to take control of the ace site, but Crims, he's gonna come out from the vent, losing a teammate in JW, who tries to jump Farley real close. Down he goes, regardless, and Crystal dies as well. That's Fnatic back on the board. Fnatic trying to break this momentum of Godsend, but it is not gonna be easy. Such a stark contrast to a lot of the CS games that we've seen at Masters so far, where there's just not much utility usage in general. It is a, a game of getting the 5v4 and then lurking for the rest of the kills to the point of fault for both teams. Um, Fnatic are obviously the team who are more warranted to do so considering they're on CT side, either trying to re reclaim a kill to, to catch up, um, but in general are just sitting in their positions waiting. Godsend are just trying to walk out, catch them by shooting them in the back. We did hear Sticko talk about how they wanted to shy away from executes, but I think there's still a disparity between full executes and using some utility but not executing, and it feels like they're not riding that line as well as they could. Good timing for Brolin. Quick and easy headshot. Now Crystal's attempt. A bit labored, but still gets the job done. 4v4 trying to clash back against Mini. Brolin's gonna best him through the smoke. Trying to play with Lady Luck. And this time it costs Godsend. They do have close proximity here versus JW Scope, and he wants that garage kill, but someone's gonna step right in front of him. JW trying to dodge back and just in the nick of time finding cover here. Zen now has that map control. What are they gonna do from here? That's a narrow escape, and Brolin's already put on his Indiana Jones camp as looking for an adventure. Flanking through secret. Looks like he'll catch one. Sticko, think he was opting? Missed the shot there. Allowing Brolin to proceed back into secret, into safety, denying the thought of going downstairs via ramp or scaring Godsent as they scope out ramp for another kill. Golden eats a bullet. Nice clear by Zen. And will they run face first into Brolin is the question. Yeah, they're going to sprint inwards. Brolin swings the doors. Crystal's Whoa. going to take him down. And now Crystal, he has a route to get onto the other side because Zen's coming through control. They've cut off 50% of the site. It's down to the one versus one. Crims just going to hope Crystal gives him the kill, but... Crystal gets back into the double doors, and now Crims is going to have to make his move. He needs that kit that's just in front of him. Smoke at a double flash if he wants to desperately try and stick this. If not, he's going to have to get over to the doors and try to disturb the post plant from Crystal, who has lesser health than Crims. Oh. Comes around. Thank goodness he had 100 HP, or else he loses that fight. Crystal taking more than half in the first few shots of the spray down. Can't manage it. Fnatic up in with an eighth round three-point lead. And it was a close one. We give him that. I mean, they brought it back from a, a 2vx or whatever. After Brolin gets his kill, you think it's over. And then Brolin swings open the control door and like lets him have a free kill. And you wonder uh, why. And I actually, I'm not sure either. There was no bomb plan as well. No audible, uh, apart from the guy running across the top railing. Maybe that's what it was. But uh, it, allow it allows it allows Godsend to get close, but not close enough to win. And, and now that Fnatic are up to eight, they're, they're feeling a little bit better about their CT side. How are Godsend going to keep it innovative? Looking to lock it down with as much as they can. Two rounds left for Fnatic to try and take. 
Auto shotgun on the field. Crystal feeling the mini split almost lining up that second body. Good job by Zen to still spam smoke and take it. That opens a route through Hut. JW trying to play around the silos in sight. Done a good job of curbing back Godsent, who instead decide to use ramp to try and go down B. Looks like Fnatic have completely forfeited the upper bomb site, and Farling's kill towards Hell could throw everything back in question. Zen comes down from Vent. He's behind enemy lines. Arrives just in time to find JW's head turned, and Flusha so outnumbered in this moment that you can't expect too much. Zen getting it in with a three-piece this round, keeping Godsent within two. Yeah, they, they keep it tight, that's for sure. I mean, they are definitely playing a dangerous game by taking on some of the most creative individuals in CS in a, in a default with all of these different lurks. But yeah, I mean, what can you say? They're keeping it close. They even almost won that 1v1 with Crystal and brought, you know, man disadvantage situations a lot closer. So maybe this is just you know, the best version of Dawson that we can ask for. And at least they're playing to their level of comfort. Nice, nice opening kill here for right Crystal. And to speak to Crystal's 1v1, you know, he's a player that statistically lags behind, uh, a, like pretty heavily, honestly, even in recent form um, and on this roster. But in 1v1s, He's one of the smartest players in the game and always does something extremely creative. Uh, and I feel like you, there's a lot of faith in him to pull these rounds out. But even though when you play it well sometimes, you can get outgunned, and that's what we saw when he tried to take down Crims. Rolling getting caught off, and it's a very clean go of it. On the 15th round here, they're actually pulling this back after drawing out the eco, just flush it left alone. Very nicely done. God sent from the 6-1 deficit to the 8-7 half. Still trailing slightly, but odds are they'll bring this back. Folks, we'll see you after the break for the second half of Nuke. A great 5-0 start for Fnatic fizzled out by the end of that first half and leave us here. Only eight CT rounds. Is that a cause for concern? Perhaps. What definitely is a cause for concern is the individual form that Stiko is currently hitting because with Fnatic facing elimination in this BO3 series, they're gonna want to shut him down and he's been looking hot. At least Fnatic switch over to the T side where they can set the precedent, where they can set the tempo. And they're gonna do so over towards ramp. Here in the pistol, already taking names. Stiko, the man I just tried to highlight, dies without more than a whimper and the B bomb site's compromised. Fnatic gonna plant. Hmm, but will they slow down? Zen holding the angle, expecting the push to come through. Bomb's not on the floor just yet, and Madden will get taken out immediately. Zen wanted to try to help him out, but he was in an angle a bit too depressed. JW makes his way into the control window, and there are a multitude of fights going on right now. Yeah, that one's huge. Golden cutting off the decontamination door. That's gonna leave Zen and Farlig both on double. Flusha gonna try and go for the flank, perhaps. This would be the big play. And actually, the CTs are trying to buy time so that Zen can come back over towards Decon. They're gonna pinch in on JW, and it works. They were two bodies on the double doors. Looked like they had to force their way out of that, which would have been so easily predicted. And instead, Ooh. they bring it down to the wire. In Song order turns to green. go for the pinch. That's you hear that whine and you think, man, it's a flusha. He drops a kill, you know he, he's going to be kicking himself about it. I, I could feel the wins from him when he was on his, you know, fifth, sixth bullet and then ended oh, up dying. Wow. If he had delayed just a second, that would have been enough. Oh, man, that's a rough one. That's a rough go of it. Eight to eight, yeah. but it's it's great for Godsend. I mean, again, this is this is Fnatic who are going to be a bit more scared to lose this game than Godsend are going to be excited to win. That's never a, a good situation to be in. Molly goes up and over. It's not going to be any moves here from Godsend towards those secret stairs. So Golden's going to find this real estate for free. Free real estate, I'm in. Yeah, rarity nowadays. Grenade is good. Ah. Oh, but he should have been. Mm. And then he's going to go one better. Looking for the third off the MP9. Solid hold from Stiko, considering the limited weaponry. But J Dubs with the big D. Pops he the man over to, on hell. Just had to choose to, like, sacrifice Flusha there for that to make sure. Just to make yeah. sure. Get the bullets out. I'm going to hit this. Bomb gets planted. Golden, very healthy right now. He's got a lot of health left over. I've seen him do crazier things. Oop, Zen almost getting the head of JW. Flashbang goes deep. The utility here for Fnatic to try and hold on with is that Molotov double flash, but it's all on JW and he only has six health. So if they can bring the clock down low, he needs to keep himself up and alive. Golden tries his damnedest to cut off the man from the back of the bomb site, but Zen comes downwards, finds that timing in decon, and sure enough, we've got Godsent in the lead. Zen has the patience of a stoic. I think it, it's fitting for a man with a name like that. He has been playing really smartly versus Fnatic in a lot of these post-plant situations, not rushing to go for trades, always anticipatory of the second player that could come out, ever pushing the advantage and dropping it, and allowing his team to work on map control while he maintains his presence and poses a threat, even though that's not a real threat. He just stands there and waits. 
Jimbo AK for JW. Gonna try desperately to get down vents. Look at that kill feed. Double blind frag plus one through smoke. And uh, a valiant eco effort comes to a grinding halt. JW is kind of looking at this AK like, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? Mm -hmm. He's Hopefully got no he opening. Kills. His teammates have not gotten the utility out of Godsend either. So, I mean, they can just now just play default, follow up with smokes, drop the mollies, burn the clock down. And winning Brings might as, be... Uh, Unrealistic. Yeah. Okay, there's a kill. That's not not too bad. They just don't want to leave this round without anything because they did invest something and wow, Zen closing it off as well up to 17 frags already. Playing definitely very well. And now Godsent drawing a lead. They're starting to mount a, a significant lead. We'll see if they can keep Fnatic in this buy save, buy save status quo. And if, if Fnatic can, can figure out a way out of it. Obviously another just another early attempt here on the T side at a rifle round, so lots of opportunities to show what they can do. The last 12 rounds, Godsent win 75% of them, which leaves only one other round as the anomaly. So they have been in control of this first map for quite some time. Let's see if JW's pressure over towards the ramp room can put an end to that. Farlig, crisp Og headshot, nicely done. And then he immediately goes right back up into heaven. So this does still open the route towards B. But, uh, I think uh, I think God Center okay with the retake, but they have to do it. Brolin over towards the secret stairs, nearly catching Zen, who tries to throw the bank nade to deal damage here. And even as Brolin goes downwards, he's met by another smoke. So Zen still has a little bit of time here to choose his position, but the bomb's planted in the midst of it all. And Golden, well, he's trying to spam back towards Decon Door. Zen's calling for help. Yeah, he's definitely in an appropriate spot. I mean, there's just a barrage of nades coming at them in the ramp. There's three that need to rotate down here. There's two choke points that they can push up, so it's not exactly congested, but they need to help out soon. That's a big first one for Crystal, but they lose their anchor towards Decon, and now you have to ask yourself, do we gamble everything else we have through ramp? The answer is no to that. Godsend, they're going to concede this round, given the 19th to Fnatic, letting them cut that lead to just a single round now, but it all hinges on JW, hitting up that ramp room, getting the hell player, and then also Godsend. Once Farley gets that first kill towards ramp, when he trades it back, he doesn't decide to stick around there. So the B site was uh -huh. so compromised. Yeah, it was. And I think that Fnatic were expecting an over rotation, a lot of fear in Godsent because they killed the ramp player who should normally be able to fall back at the very minimum and lock down lower so that your upper players don't have to fall out of heaven. And so Krim starts throwing nades downstairs, but coming back up. And they were trying very hard to catch a rotate, but Zen was not giving it up. And he was there in secret to spot to make sure and to see if they're going to actually fake it or commit downstairs. But still, even with all that, they didn't have rotations in, a pl in place. And, and Fnatic from that perspective, checkmated them. Far like now, oh my god, as they're trying to go lower, off of the ladder, no scope. That's ridiculous. Just unreal. He's gonna keep trying to get out of here, drops a frag grenade on his own head, doing more damage than what he would have liked. Follow up smoke grenade towards mini, bomb's gonna be planted, of course, here from Fnatic, three versus two. Zen just hoping that on the side of the smoke he could find an angle, but that should never happen. JW gonna keep him honest with eyes on it. Farleg forfeits vents, doubles back up, but uh, hell, if he had been able to get a second one onto who I, what, what I believe was Crims, who moved past the first body, then that would have just been godlike. But uh, regardless, Farleg, I, I, you know, I tip my hat towards you for even trying it the first time. Let alone the second. Yeah, that's, uh, it could have been such a cool round, but to, no, nobody else really got a kill, so... I thought it was all part of, you know, he he's the one player upstairs that is no longer useful. You know, he's the one who gets caught out when they bust out Squeaky. So for him to have impact, that's what gets me excited. And then you think, well, if his teammates get anything out of this, and now they have info on speak Squeaky and a man down, they can hold. But it all obviously is inconsequential, as he's pretty much the only one to get a frag. We can't forget that Farleg was the player who was knifed inside of Vent last round, or last half, rather, by Krim. So he has to go one better. You know, you got to get your dignity back. After being stabbed inside of Vent, you just, you just got to one-up the man with a no-scope of all things. Had it been Crims, it would have been sweet, delicious justice. Mm -hmm. Somebody takes the bullet for him. Crims laps all the way to the bank. Quiet walk outside by Fnatic as they look to compromise Secret. I think I like where they're coming from here. Godsend have been a, a bit too patient on the rotate sometimes. Zen, I think, is the most aware of the team, but he's only one man. It's definitely going to be a team effort, and it looks like off of the smoke. He's got to whip up something. Three players, a head pops up, and Crims, what? Turns on a dime. Peace out, Zen. Just blows him away. Same as Flusha coming in through mini. He's disrupting this A site to try and keep any type of event rotate at bay. Crystal trying his damnedest to stay standing. Actually drops bomb. This was a last minute adjustment from Fnatic. They could have taken the B site for free. Instead, they're pounding their head against the wall on A. Stiko, the player we praised for standing up and then having incredible form as of late. One versus three back site. 
He is trying absolutely his hardest, flashing off the walls, trying to disrupt that, trying to keep eyes on bomb, but it's just too much to handle. Fnatic, oh my god, they made that way harder than it had to be, but they Seriously. still get through with the win. They take the advantage and they try their hardest to defenestrate it, but it stays. They, they end up trading out efficiently no matter what. It's the kills ultimately that allow them to do anything, but they really risked it all to try to get back upstairs when they got the most important kill in lower. And again, are anticipating over rotates from Godsent, but Godsent have been doing the opposite. They've been late to rotates. It feels like Fnatic are, are kind of playing themselves a, a bit too much because, yeah, I mean, they're, they're doing the right things and expecting a certain response. That response isn't coming. So in the future, commit to the site because Godsent are a bit too slow. Oh, yeah. More of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on now. AK for your troubles. They heard that, but they can't stop it. Rap smokes outside. Could mean a number of things, though. You know, still leave secret open if no one's spotting. And they... Ooh. <laughs> What's that smoke doing up there? <laughs> yeah, so it's a cloud. They threw a cloud down outside on heaven. They have clouds in heaven. smoking on the rooftops. It's a nice summer day. It's feeding. Or it's pollution from this nuclear facility, and, uh, you know, you shouldn't be breathing that in. Hmm. Or choose to. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. That's true. It is your life. Live it how you want. Did come down, down to the bomb site. Yeah, found it open. No defense here, so I think that's uh, what you had mentioned a couple of times about uh, uh, a lackluster rotation pace. When teams don't rotate, you know, they're scared. They either are not fighting for information enough, or they're just too terrified to believe it. Just a physical skill, so never should we have expected Godsent to walk away with a round win, but they are doing the dirty deeds that almost bring it into the clutch. It's still the two versus two immediately shut down here by Fnatic. They get the best of the pistols once they know where they are at and a two round advantage for Fnatic. Again, on this T side, really starting to set the pace, really starting to set the tempo. If it wasn't the defuse win for Godsent in the pistol, then maybe they don't even have those three rounds that they start this half with. Remember, we saw Fnatic go 5-0 up, 6-1 up in fact, CT side to start and Godsent's momentum cut even shorter than that. Counter-Strike, as T sided as ever. Indeed it is. Everybody very, very thought true. it was Krieg. No, it was a net code the whole time. Smokes down. And another another attempt here at Godsend to, to try to scare them a bit more. I mean, they're working outside. You're getting the early 5v4 is a win condition for them. That eases up on the need for rotate, even if they're going to be a bit slow. Uh, oh, and Zen. Yeah. He's going to be a key component of their wins as well. Locking down Secret. When they're liking downstairs, that's big. He sticks around on top of that. Does 250 or so damage, leaving Crimson JW with all the work. Two on three left over. They're down to half HP each, and JW fails his lurk. Huge moves by Zen. I mean, you saw him almost throw away the first kill just on the cusp of the smoke. Has a huge advantage versus that player who walks in blind. But what I really like about his reposition was that he had tucked back around the next corner in case somebody had actually gotten onto the staircase and would have, you know, full aim. The, the reason he so easily wins the second fight is, of course, because we have these terrorists trying to jump up onto the railing. There was no way for them to get their vision around that staircase corner without having to jump, and he finds that timing perfectly. Before they could reset their accuracy, he swings back out for the second. It does go traded, but it is the reason God sent are able to win this round. They had Fnatic corralled outside. He's this one almost thrown away. On Nuke, at least, he's definitely seeming like the most aware. And as you're pointing out, you know, they have to jump up on the railing to take a fight with yeah. him. So he's happy to do it. And anybody who's going to assume he's around the corner, they have to commit to a full swing around and probably pre-aim the wrong angle. So a lot of good reasons for him to fight like that. And it's great. He's brave enough to try it. What is going to be the course of action now for Fnatic? They have been stopped in secret. There's still other ways to get downstairs, but there might be a tractor in their way. Looks like we're going to have another variation of their outside smokes. There's a world where that clip from Zen is even better, of course. You know, take note in the replay. Uh, Crims kills him while falling. So, mm. imagine a world where that whole thing comes to a grinding halt, and Fnatic would have looked like fools. Let's see if they can weather the storm better this round. Three smokes thrown. Molly in response, but there's not anybody actually behind it. I just want to keep a... Uh, I think they want to make ramp a little bit weaker here by drawing the second ramp rotator out. And they start to push it now. Leaves Deco in the 1vx. Yeah, Farley called to action. Extends, lines him up, sprays him down. All too easy with the AUG. That's massive. A clean sweep here from Godsent, keeping all five players alive. And I gotta say, Godsent's timing on the smokes, Mohan, I think that plays mm -hmm. into it. Did you notice how we had three of Fnatic's players on, Seek, on Squeaky Door after they threw that fake wall of smokes? And then they couldn't run out because Godsent dropped two smokes on the side of Squeaky. And who wants to run through that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, so just, they go uh... to ramp, and it doesn't work. Um, and yeah, either way, they pull uh, rotation for a small cost, either 
Well, Zen's in mini right now. I don't know who was in mini last round, but if it was him to have his back turn just for a second. I mean, even even though they, they pull the rotation outside, Farlick is back and with enough time, and that's a fine compromise on a pistol. They give it their best shot. Zen open lines of sight here with the AUG. No smokes to stop him. And Crystal picks up the pieces. Just JW now. 1v4. Wow, man. God sent in the lead. Looking good. Fnatic will, I think, try a new a new route, maybe more direct into lower. I'm surprised to not see more crazy chaos and aggression towards Squeaky, especially in the early rounds. And I feel like they could get to lower if they want to. Um, I'm not going to ask Fnatic to be more patient, of course, but I think that uh, they can they can eventually get there again through a number of ways, either a vent drop, a ramp take, or outside but maybe don't dive right for secret right away. Seven years ago, five players in the server weren't playing CSGO professionally when Fnatic won their first major in CSGO. That is all, that's, that is the, the lay of the land these days. Flesh a three times bodies. major, yeah, Flesh a three times major winner, and I'm sure God sent, we're all typing exclamation drop in the chat, watching him win. We've had some incredible performances from the new kids on the block. If there's anything that we've learned at Masters, it's that the next generation of Counter-Strike player is here. Farlig putting up numbers right now. Beamas and Brokey, last match with, whoa. The likes of Spirit ahead of them. Everybody's putting it in. However, JW is swinging it wide. Smoke denies his follow-up vision, so he stops. Five versus four for Godsend. Now they could just try kerneling up if they want to, but I like that Stiko still sticks around to this ramp smoke. I feel like he hasn't really lost any of the duels that come his way. Pretty constantly cutting down the numbers. Zen's in a good position because both of those smokes Plume next to him, and he could just peek right into the tees off of the flash. He'll do so. Farling setting him up for it, but Golden's trade straight away keeps the advantage just within one. And now he's going to try to pressure this A site, but it's going to be hard for him to find anybody. Maiden back. The depths of the bomb site, cutting him down. Oh, oh, nicely done. Right through the smoke leaves. Flush a one versus four. This is Godsent about to secure their 14th round and very well looking to ice Fnatic out of this first map quickly. Flush already for it, but wow, I just, I just can't. No, nah, no, they. Dude, he Iron Madden. They put himself in a position, a beautiful position with this far league pick to continually trade down material up into the point that they're in a man advantage, but then and then just don't get traded. <laughs> uh, they're, they're happy to take fights after that point, I think, and Fnatic in that comfort zone is exactly where they didn't want them to be. It felt like we didn't even get to see what Fnatic wanted to do. And instead just had to respond to the fact that they lost and dropped the kill so early. So here is some squeaky presence, but is it a bit too late? There's so much utility here for for, uh, for Godsend to deal with any kind of rush strategies. We see the fire go down at ramp and stick up to bat one more time. Yeah, he's going to get blinded. A little bit too much pressure, I think, for him to really gamble sticking around. Puts down the smoke. The pistols start to oh, filter in. He's dude. back and forth and back again. Three headshots as only Golden seemed to best him. Flusha, however, has done a great job up on the A site to take two kills with just the pistol. However, he falls. Farling with the Deagle trying to duel versus Golden. He wants to open the door and follows through. Looked like maybe he was going to play the site but he decides against it. So what are Farlig and Crystal gonna do here? Double smoke, triple flash, man advantage as they start to move this one forward. Crystal falling off of the rafters. Oh, immediately shut off of the bomb. Golden looking for the three piece. Farlig, he's gonna tap it once. Golden comes wide, he gets it. Every kill seems to be his. Follows through on the B site. One round, the difference. Fnatic nipping at the heels of Godsend. Man, he was so good at those clutches, specifically from that door. We've seen him have so many moments in that position. And Sticko, he does all the work in the world. Like, as you pointed out, even though Godsend have lost rounds in this half, Sticko always gets one at ramp. This round, he gets three. You actually can't ask for more, especially from the spot that he's standing in. He's dealing with a crossfire of T's coming at him from the middle of a ramp where they're definitely pre-firing and have audibles every single time. Get off my lawn. Godsend's five players have just over 77,000 kills combined. Crims JW and Flusha have over 90. And yeah, it's just to highlight and emphasize the experience discrepancy for Fnatic. And that, you know, they've got, I mean, we were talking about new players, uh, Bymass. We got Brolin as well. You know, he's one of them. And honestly, in terms of fragging, the second or first most consistent player on Fnatic. One of the most reliable and the youngest. Oh, uh -oh. Farling. You're a madman. Oh, oh he my. even sticks around. He misses two shots and still commits to it. It works out for him. He actually drops the bomb back in lobby. So if Fnatic get all these entries, so be it. They need to go back and struggle for control. Yo. Brolin, rolling in the headshots. Are you for real?
<laughs> the most difficult part of the round was supposed to be going back to get bomb. He does it on his own. He's like, nah, nah, I got this. Just yeah. blows Farlig away, ties us up at 14 rounds. Is every single map today at Masters going into overtime? Because I'm it ready might. it is. Yeah, why not, man? I mean, they really do feel evenly matched, godsend, earning everyone's respect. And it's seriously, it's even more impressive that they're kind of doing it in like a way that Fnatic are built to defeat. You know, they're emphasizing individuals. They're emphasizing lurks. These are all things that Fnatic have writ the, written the books on and uh yeah and then godsend's really showing them up in their own game i say showing them up i say staying tied is pretty much showing them up at this point it's definitely very impressive but uh, here's here's a chance for Fnatic to close out round 29 they're up significantly in terms of economy there's not in fact not a single piece of utility to godsend's name they're saving it all for the next round so just don't blow this and then we could talk about a potential for a 16 14 in favor of Fnatic, who have had to kind of perform a comeback yeah, again, starting this map six rounds to one. Fnatic let Godsent back into the game. Whoa, Madden. He finds a T with his head turned, but can't make the most of the CZ. Brolin comes back in for this. Shoot at me, you punk. Yeah, he's a shark. Looks like he's looking to pinch in with his teammates to the A site. Sure enough, Zen off the top of Hut gets one, but I love JW's play there. He just waits a moment, lets him fall, swings the door. It's the spinal tap, and then the denied lobby crunch to Crystal. Not so clear how he's going to get himself into this clutch. One versus four with nothing other than a vanilla pistol. Fnatic finding 15. But this was the game plan from Godsend. They, woo, they let this happen. They understood it was going the distance. So can this buy take us to overtime? Yeah, yeah. I mean, for Godsend, I love the opening uh, aggression. Far Lake inside of hut one round, inside of ramp as well. I'd like him to, to try something like that to establish. If he can do it in some kind of safe fashion, I think uh, that that just ha will speak to Godsend's ability to push a 5v4 to a win. Um, Brolin's taken some early damage. That's obviously, as we've highlighted, a very important player. Some hasty rotations now to cover up for lower as Zen is having his position replaced. Brolin looking for some action, but the shadow does him no favors. Nope. See if Golden can be the shining sun. He tries to get the round one, walks out from Hut, takes the dink, gets just the single kill as Farley locking it up from the heavens. And this looks like OT, baby. Godsend locking it down on the A site. It certainly helps when they can win that duel versus Brolin outdoors. Zen immediately turns his attention back to help with Farley. And this off just constantly threatening from heaven. Zen pinned into his position, finishes the 30th round with three kills. And overtime starts now. They did something kind of unlike anything they really tried in this half with this full press to the upstairs instead of working their kill somewhere else. And uh, I feel like, you know, a lot of their success came from lower hits that were they were taking from, for granted early on. And even though Godsent made a good rotation downstairs, there was still a good reason to maybe try to think about ramp or outside uh, before anything else. But I, I feel like when Brolin dies, he was that attempt and they kind of put all their eggs in his basket and then just force themselves upstairs and it, didn't, it just didn't work out. And, and again, it's just not something that we've seen work for them. And so you wonder why pull something like that out into, into round 30. See if they can take the success they've had on this T side and weaponize it in overtime. First to fifth, uh, excuse me, first to 19. 18 secures double OT. I like this far, like he was uh, given a little bit of space here on secret, hasn't seen anything, and so he decides to go one better, climbs the staircase, close lines, golden, and Zen with a kill of his own. This has been the Farlig and Zen show. You know, mm -hmm. as much as we hype up Stiko and as, as many rounds as he has had impact trying to lock down ramp, Zen and Farlig really taking the reins on this one. Farlig is everywhere, whether he's inside of heaven, secret, or now apparently the bottom of ramp. Buddy yes. owns this map, but they uh, have used hell to heaven. A quick readjustment here from Fnatic that puts Crystal in question. He stops it all though, three piece. <laughs> As they try to fall down on him, they never touch the dirt. 16-15 for Godsend. Yeah, absolutely crushed here. As they try to subvert expectations once again, take ramp to heaven this time to approach A from another perspective. Definitely not a weak strategy to try to implore, but uh, Crystal is all too ready. And uh, Farlick makes it difficult from the get-go with that, that ramp hold. And as you mentioned, he's been everywhere. Spots feel like they're changing up on the fly. Finally, an opening kill here for JW, but immediately answered back by, by Farlick. And he has been stopping Brolin, most importantly, outside. Good point. Yeah, Brolin has been countered at the start of each of these rounds. That's why we got to overtime to begin with. And that's why Godsent are winning OT at the moment. So if we're Fnatic, putting ourselves in, in their shoes, you know, they're, Godsent have a very good lockdown on all of these 
spots right now. Ramp must be scary. I think you want to throw some attention to Ramp to make sure Farley can't do this, but even when you try to do that, it just incentivizes him to come forward, and it looks like he's ready for another kill, and JW looks like he's got nothing to lose. Almost there to peek Farley on top of it. Flush a trade with the HE as he's been known to do, but it's still, they're down. Ooh. And JW actually is like starting <gasps> to make a case for it. But Sticko rips his head off while he's just trying to land on the floor. He's, he's in the air trying to get down the ramp. It's Sticko like peeks in for a moment. It's like a defenseless baby bird. Oh, that's a brute. That's a, yeah, that's a brutal visualization, but that's, yeah, that's probably what it felt like. JW just thinking, man, I should have held that angle for one more second, is what you're telling me. Well, they're gonna rush him, they're just gonna straight up rush. Madden swings the door open right away. Flash is great, but they don't capitalize on it. Now, Flush, he's just playing with his grenades here. Gotta get your gun back out. He's just dying in the middle of the bomb site, and that's Godsent take it 17. Sometimes it looks like genius, sometimes it looks like madness. Yeah, that it always looks like Flesha. Yeah. Unfortunate. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, they, they got it close. Everything was a two on three or four, and they almost Last brought the out. trades back in. Yeah, final timeout. Maybe they saw OT on the horizon, put one in the back pocket, and Fnatic can uh, chill and talk about this. But they, they've got a number. See, the thing is, the real frustrating part is that there are a number of ways that they can get opening fights without pushing because Godsend are doing them a favor by giving them those fights. But it's like Farleg is winning those fights. JW can't, is never the one to see him. Golden Boy. Golden had 367 utility damage and 20 enemies flashed in regulation. The most on the server, in the server, on both. That's a very nice stat. That's three and a half whole people. Many men. Many, 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 many men. Here we go. W. Last chance. Final attempt on the T side of overtime for Fnatic. I mean, it was some nice hopping from JW to get them over towards ramp last round. J Dubs in for the trade. Flush us, spamming smoke. He has been such a nuisance in doing so. But he goes on the back of this bomb site. He falls. He sees two, drops both bodies. And now that's a man advantage in for Godsend. But Zen, nail in the coffin as he slides in from Mini. Blonders, they tried the same thing that they used at the end of regulation in their final T round of OT. And it works out about just as well. Falling flat is fanatic, not a single T round. So if it's not double overtime here on Godsent's map choice, it's Godsent one map away from eliminating Fnatic. Can't believe how consistent and good they look, how aware Zen is, how good Farlick has been on the op, how amazing Sticko has been as an anchor. Unreal. Not just doing it on the Ecos on ramp. Ooh, very nice. I was just about to say, JW kind of put in smoke at his own face, but he comes out better for it. Golden charged down by Stiko and Zen, a deadly duo down the ramp towards the B bomb site. Brolin, cautious that maybe this is still the A site, and by calling out the mini player, they have a little bit of a confirmation here. It's not quite clear as to where that bomb's got off to. And right now, it's with Zen. He's walking across the rafters of the B site. Stiko oh. holding for the op, and JW walking into the headlights just gets creamed on the highway to a loss. Because it's man advantage here for Godsend, they're on the site. Crims, he's got the grenades to try and disturb this post plant, but it looks like Zen might come right for him. Opening up the door, Crims tries to spam through, nearly getting the kill, but the frag grenade's gonna miss the mark. The Molotov behind the smoke's not gonna do anything either. And this bomb, nearly halfway gone, as Stiko still holds the same corner. He welcomes Brolin oh, in, dude. shuts him down. Crims, one versus three, finds 